Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about using some technology, some calculator technology specifically, for finding Z intervals. And it turns out that the um, this process of finding a Z interval is actually pretty straightforward. And it turns out that you can actually uh, program this in a calculator or a computer of some kind. Okay, and it actually turns out that, that many programs actually have this um, already built in. So, in particular, a TI-84 and a TI-Inspire have wizard programs that already are included that can compute these intervals, compute Z intervals, very easily. And so these uh, shortcuts are extremely powerful and, ex and great time savers. And they, uh, they exist, of course, because Z intervals are such an important thing. Now remember that a Z interval is a confidence interval for the mean of a population determined from a sample, where the uh, standard deviation of the population known and the distribution of sample means is normal or at least approximated very well by normal distribution. And so we've gone through these steps uh, with our previous videos, and this one we're going to show you how the shortcuts work. Okay, so let's, let's do an example here. Suppose a manufacturer is making bearings and measures a random sample of 20 of them. She determines that the distribution of individual masses is at least mound-shaped and is thus reasonably close to being normally distributed. She then measures their masses and determines that the mean mass of the sample is 257 grams. From past experience, she can assume that the standard deviation of the mass of all such bearings is 12 grams. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the true mean mass of all such bearings. Now, you might want to go ahead and do this one as we have done these in the past, and then convince yourself that the shortcut is going to give us the same answer, but in fact, we want to use the shortcut in this video. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we're, a Z interval is the appropriate thing to do. So we're computing the confidence interval for the mean of a population. Check. That's true. This population standard deviation is known. Again, that's good. And the distribution of sample means is approximately normal, even though the sample size is a bit under 30. And that's OK, uh, because the distribution of individual measurements is mound shaped. The distribution of sample means is going to be uh, approximated well by a normal distribution. So those are the three criteria we need for a, a Z distribution. Now here's how this works in a TI calculator. Uh, let's start with a, uh, a TI-84. You're going to hit, I'll actually pull up an emulator and go through the steps with you here in just a minute, but we're going to hit stat and uh, uh, go to tests and we're going to go down to number seven which is Z interval. We're going to select statistics, stats, enter in the values that you see here and it out pops the interval. So it's very easy uh, to do that. So let's do that here. Okay, so uh, let's do this here with the TI-84 on the right. So you just hit stat and it's in test. We can right arrow twice or just left arrow once. And we go down to number seven. We can either arrow down to number seven and then uh, press enter or I could just press the seven for a Z interval. Notice by the way there are various other of these wizards that it has here. We'll look at how to use some of those a little bit later in the videos. Okay, now you can either input from data or statistics. This one, use data if you have your data listed in one of the lists with the individual data. If they've already figured out the statistics for you, you put the arrow on stats and hit enter. So for this one, the standard deviation was 12. The uh, sample mean was uh, 257, X bar. The N was 20, and the confidence level was 90%, so that's 0 .90 or 0 0.9. And then all you do is hit calculate, and look at that, boom. Does the whole thing for you right there. So there's the confidence interval, 250. 2.59 to 261.41. It also tells us the mean and, and sample size uh, which we actually entered in. And so actually that's that's all there is to it. Now let's do the same thing on the TI Inspire that you see here. 
So you just go to a, a calculator screen. We go to on and, and add a calculator screen by, by moving the cursor to here and do that. Um, and go to, uh, this is back to the current document there. And then go to menu. Go down to use your arrow, your touchpad here go to go down to statistics. Right arrow. And we're going to choose confidence interval. See it? Number six. Go down to number six. Right arrow. And it's the first one, a Z interval. And we do that. We have our two choices for data entry. They're either the data or stats, just like before. Like the other one, this is going to go to stats and either hit this button here or hit the enter. And then click on OK. And then we just enter the stuff in. Sigma was 12. X bar was 257. And N was 20. And we're doing a 90% confidence interval, so the C level is 0.9. Go down here to OK and hit enter and it result it gives it here um, don't worry so much about the command up here but here's what it is title is z interval there's the lower confidence le uh, interval so it's 252.586 to the upper of 261.414 it shows one more decimal place than the uh, same interval here in the uh, ti84 calculator and it summarizes the statistics again it also tells us what x bar was which we entered it also finds the margin of error, which I've been, just been calling E. There it is. So this is this interval goes from X bar, so 257 plus this E is the top number, 261 point something. And this number here, 257 minus the margin of error, is the lower number, 252 point something. N was 20 and sigma is 12. So it sort of summarizes everything there. And it's just that easy to do. Okay. So... Really, it's quite easy to do, and there's a slide showing the same thing, the same screens, showing the, uh, the method of, of doing that. So it's exactly the same thing. So very easy. Okay, so here's an exercise for you to do. You try it with your calculator, whether you have an Inspire or a T84, or maybe you've got some other kind of calculator. And by the way, there are other programs that can do similar things. Uh, statistical programs, most of them will do... Um, Z intervals. So programs like Minitab, SPSS, uh, StatCrunch, um, and other things will do it. Um, and you may see some 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 uh, things written for Excel that will do these uh, Z intervals directly. But if not, it, uh, Excel of course can at least do the calculations you need. So you could easily set up a spreadsheet to compute Z intervals in this manner as well. So anyway, let's use your calculator technology if you have it or whatever other technology you're using and see if you can figure out this particular one here. Suppose that a field biologist is concerned about the average length of a certain species of fish and measures a random sample of 35 of them. He then measures their masses and determines that the mean length of the sample is 35.2 centimeters. From past experience, he can assume that the standard deviation of the lengths of all such fish is 3 centimeters. Use a calculator wizard to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true mean length of all such fish. Do this one on your own. Come back and check your answer when you're done. Press pause now. Well, here we go. On a, uh, here's the TI-84 solution. Again, go to te uh, test. Uh, choose Z interval. Uh, stat. Test. Z interval. Go to stats here and plug in your information. Sigma is 3. X bar is 35.2, N is 35, confidence levels 0.95, then put your cursor on calculate and enter, and out pops the confidence interval. As long as you don't need any more decimal places than this, you're good to go. Okay. So there it is, 34.206 to 36.194. And really, the main thing you have to do is just, number one, know which, which of these tests or intervals to use that are built in, know that a Z interval is appropriate in this setting, and just fill in the blanks and then interpret your final answer. So we're 95% sure that the true mean length of the fish is somewhere in this interval.
That is, if we were to repeat this process with other samples of 35 fish drawn from this population, we would get different means each time, more, li more than likely. The intervals they produce would all have the same width, but centered up at different means, and 95% of them should capture the true mean. Now here's the same thing on a TI Inspire. Again, review the steps. You hit uh, Menu, and you choose uh, Statistics, so on this first list, then Confidence Intervals, and then Z Interval, then choose Stats, and then enter in the statistics as you see them here. Same thing we did on the TI-84. Press OK, and there's your Z interval. There's the lower and upper part of your Z interval, and then the other summary statistics, including the margin of error, which the TI-84 didn't tell you, but you could certainly figure out. OK, let's do another example. Suppose that an educator is concerned about the average scores on a test of the general mathematics skills and collects the following test scores from a random sample of subjects. OK. And so we see these things. We don't know what the scale is, so we don't know how good these things are. But we can uh, still compute a Z interval for the average. Now further suppose that he can assume that the distribution of individual scores is distributed approximately normally and that the population standard deviation is 10. Use the calculator wizard to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true mean score of the population on this test. Okay, so uh, do this one on your own, and we'll check it here in a minute. Press pause now. Well, remember, the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that all the criteria for a Z interval are satisfied, and it has it that we've it's already told us that the uh, even though the popu even though the sample size is small, the it, it tells us that the individual scores are approximately normal. So the uh, the distribution of sample means will be approximately normal, even though the sample size is only uh, I think this is I think it's 10 here, and um, and we need to know the population standard deviation, and we're wanting a z interval for the mean. So we got all three criteria done. Now this time, what we need to do is we need to actually type this data into the calculator. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Stat Edit and type that in, and then we run the wizard just like before. Okay. So if you haven't done this yet, go ahead and do it now. So first of all, I hit edit, and well, let me just let me just pull up the calculator and actually show you that way first. So here, um, I'm going to hit stat, edit, and I actually already have the data in. But if you had data in there, remember uh, the first thing you're going to do. Uh, this is not the right data. So if you go up to the list, that list, hit clear and enter. We'll clear the list out. So normally I would go up here to list one, hit clear and enter and then type the data in, but I've already got it in here, so I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so I have, I guess that's the data there. It looks like there's 11 of them. Yeah, 11. 11 data points, so that's correct. I said 10 while ago, but there's actually 11. Okay, so get the data in there in one of the lists. Then you can quit and go back to the home screen. Then you go to stat, left arrow to test. We want a Z interval, so I just do number seven. This time, instead of saying stats, go to data. Hit enter there. And it asks us for the standard deviation of the population, which we have to know. In this case, it was 10. And we tell it where our list of data is. It was list one. That's correct. Remember, to get list one, you do... Uh, do second one to get list one. Frequency is always going to be one if you've got a complete list of your data in one list. Now, if you do a frequency table where the data is in list one and, and the frequencies are in list two, then you'd put list two here. Confidence level, this time we're 95% confidence level, so I need to put that as 0.95. And then calculate. Notice it tells us x bar and sigma of the x's. Okay, and N. So it counted the data for us, and it gave us the uh, that information. This, um, I mean, this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is not sigma of the x's. This is S of the x's. So this is a sample standard deviation. So this sample had a standard deviation of 6.23. The true standard deviation of the population is supposed to be 10. And this is x bar here. So this s sub x is actually computed, but it's not actually needed 
for the interval. So that's extra information. The X bar is exactly halfway in the middle of this interval and then it goes up and down from there. So anyway, there's your, there's your interval. Okay, on the TI Inspire, what you want to do is you want to do a, um, you want to add a spreadsheet <clears throat> to this. I think I've got, I think I already got my data in. Yeah, so here, at, go to spreadsheet. Uh, it's, you can type in some name right here if you want. I just called it data, but you could say test scores or something. You give it some kind of name. And then go down here and just in this column down here, starting with, with here, just start typing in the data values and work your way down here. Make sure there's not any extra in there, so you want to clear that out if, they, if you need to. And type all your data values in. Now we're going to go back to uh, this tab 1.1 over here. Okay, let me just. So now that's the leftovers from the last one. Again, we're going to go through the same steps. Menu, select number six, statistics, and then confidence intervals and Z interval. This time it's from data, so that's okay. That is from the data. And the sigma is known, it was 10. The list is, I think if you just click on this, it will give you the choices. Data is where it is, frequency list is one. 95% confidence interval, that's good. And then click on OK. It tells you it's a Z interval. There's the lower limit, which you notice is the same as the other calculator, except we have one more digit in the display. There's the confidence level for the, level for the uh, uh, confidence interval. There's the upper limit there, and the same here. X bar, both of them. We actually have more digits over here in the 84 four listed, but here it is here. And the, this one can, tells you the margin of error, which the other one didn't. And by the way, I am using a, a computer algebra system, a CAS version of this, but it works exactly the same on a non-CAS version. Exactly the same. And this does tell us N and the sigma that we put in. It does not tell us the, yeah, it does tell us the S here, the S of the, of the X's, which is a sample standard deviation, which this one tells us again. And again, that, that number is really irrelevant for this particular problem. So, um, so anyway, there it is. Uh, there are the screenshots on that slide that we just saw in the in there, and here are the screenshots on the uh, TI Inspire. So now you know how to do the TI Inspire and the TI eighty four, how to do confidence intervals, and it's I mean it's so easy to do. It's it's very straightforward. Um, and it's very very powerful so that can be very useful so as long as you uh, is the the uh, um, test question doesn't require you to show all the intermediate steps or it doesn't require you to need more decimal places than, than are shown here um, this works just fine and it's fantastic so in our next video we're going to move on to our second main idea of um, uh, inferential statistics and that is going to be hypothesis testing.